Hello everybody, my name is Rin. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is making me mad. Contrary to popular belief, it's not easy to make me mad. I'm actually usually just mildly annoyed. But the topic of today's video is actually making me very mad. So we're about to have a fun time? Not fun, fun at the same time? I don't know. Today's video is going to be about a very popular artist that you probably even come across that is actually a creep and a weirdo and very, very problematic. But first, we have hit 70k little blind mouse. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here for the tea. I don't think that it's fair to classify today's video as tea, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, little blind mouse, little blind mouse is why I call my followers here on YouTube because as artists, when you get a blank piece of paper in front of us, it's like we've never seen whatever the fuck we wanted to draw in the first place. So we are little blind mouse. Some artists, you know, maybe they shouldn't fucking draw. I'm just saying. Some artists, maybe they, they shouldn't draw. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself once again. Now, due to the topic of today's video, uh, we will be talking about some really dodgy subjects. So if hearing about child abuse, grooming and pedophilia mm, is triggering to you, please click away now. Click away, click away, go. Without further ado, the artist that we are going to be talking about is called Kawanossi or Kawanochi or Kawanonsi for reasons that will become apparent in a minute. He's got 1 million Instagram followers, who the fuck knows how many on other platforms. The point is, you've probably fucking seen him. He's been in the art community for a minute. If you've done art in the past 10 years, you've probably seen him, especially in the early ages of deviant art. This is his art, uh, you know, whimsical settings, beautiful coloring, it's really good art. It's really good art. His bread and butter or his animal crackers and jelly since he fucking likes infantilizing shit so much. But I'm getting ahead of myself. He's, the lot of stuff that he likes to do is fan art. It's, it's mainly fan art. But the issues began though when he started making fan art of a Sims 4 character which happens to be a vampire of many hundreds of years. Well, you may say what the fuck is the issue with that? The issue is that he usually pairs this vampire with an original character of his, which is a, a child. child. May, this little girl right here. But don't worry, May is a child, but it's not really what you're thinking. Caleb is a father figure to her. He raised her and now she's all grown up. I'm sure they've still got a wonderful parent-child relationship. She's pregnant. She's pregnant. Let's just go through the comic together. How about we do that? How about we go through the comic together? I'm sure we're gonna have a, a grand, wonderful, amazing time. Right? Right? Let's look at the character bios. So this is... This is... Ka 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 whatever. Caleb. He's a pure blood vampire. Of course he is. He's gotta be. He's the main character. He's over 800 years old. That's a bit important for later. He really hates humans. He's a tortured king. Does he grew up killing a lot of humans and drinking their blood? Cool, cool, cool. He likes playing chess and often wins. Bro, this guy is just a merry suit. He can do everything, this guy. Here we got Mei. She's, she's a tiny, she's a tiny, tiny little thing. She's 153. She's five foot tall. She's a tiny, tiny little gremlin. Very kind, pure and sweet human girl. We love a very tortured soul vampire who kills a lot of, of people with this pure savior complex girl. Although she had a dark past with her abusive father, she's still very kind to people and would try to help anyone in trouble. Her shiny pearl earrings were gifts from Carl on her 16th birthday. This is important because whenever we're gonna see her with the fucking earrings, she's gonna be 16 or older. May and Lucas went to the same elementary and they met when they were both very young. He's famous at school because he's blessed with a charming face and overall good looks that May ends up having a crush on him. So May has a crush on him, but that's important. The comic starts when little May, this six year old child, meets this uh, 800 year old vampire. Right now he's not her guardian, they're just uh, meeting in the park and uh, she sees him wilting a flower and she's like shit that's the coolest trick that I ever did see and he's like aren't you aren't you scared of me aren't you scared of me aren't you scared of me 
<laughs> That's the ugliest I've ever looked, bro. This is the skin of a monster, man. <laughs> Whatever, bro. She's just met this man, this strange man in the park. And she's like, shit, I like you. I'm a little girl. And I like you, old man that can wilt flowers and shit. They keep seeing each other in this park. She keeps coming through. And he keeps wilting flowers because that's his motherfucking hobby, I guess. And understandably now, uh, as he should have done from the very first moment that he saw her, he's like, where are your parents? And she's like, I don't know, they fight a lot. So now, now he knows that this child is uh, from an abusive kind of household. So what does he do when they meet next? He's like, go away. I'm not your babysitter. Okay, back, back at it again with his hobby of wilting the flowers. Somehow one year later, he finds out somehow we, we're not told that she's uh, she's been abandoned by his, her father she's dead she's almost dead we could assume that there's a non-creepy motive for him to be there somehow uh, and she's like don't leave me and he's like I won't leave you I won't leave you but then she's such a she's such an airhead this little child that she sees a bunny she gets distracted the bunny is hurt and then he's like to this six year old child this tortured ass man this weird ass man he's like the strong live the weak die they're useless a burden to the world they're prey animals besides the weak won't last a second in this world but she's like, oh no, oh no, it's not his fault. She has to tell him common sense because he's, he's traumatized or whatever. He's tortured, you know, remember he's tortured. He's goth. He's a goth vampire lord or whatever. So she has to be like, oh no, no, everyone is as lucky as us. He didn't ask to be born a bunny. The strong exists not to bully the weak, but to protect them. And he's like, this dumbass child. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> the fuck is that expression now the next panel a very very gross moment is depicted so again if you are triggered by depictions of the topics that we mentioned at the beginning of this video please click away or skip to this skip to this so she and caleb are walking somewhere and there's there's some guys there's some people uh who are pedophiles these guys are pedophiles uh, they, they kind of ask for her to join them uh, they're like we have lots of candy haha <laughs> what a cutie to a six-year-old child and and the author has chosen to depict this why would the author think of this shit and they grab her they grab her and for some reason uh, they, they, they they see this man with her her parent as the fucking actual predators work like this and then ironically the more accurate depiction of an abuser saves the little girl he's like you're lost don't try me and then they're like ah oh, shit he's a vampire oh no apparently it's my fucking broad daylight uh it's not like he just wanted to do that it's not like he just wanted to depict that shit now the next little moment he's ill and she's like ah oh, shit i gotta take care of my dad so she goes to buy some medicine for her dad while she's at the pharmacy she buys some medicine that's uh, presumably good for vampires and and the fucking pharmacist is like little girl that medicine is not for human are you taking care of a demon she's like he's got a fever oh and then the pharmacist to this little six year old seven year old whatever this little girl right here are you in love with a demon which motherfucking adult would do that shit? Which motherfucking adult but the weird uncle would do that shit? Oh my god. That's why I'm saying the adults in this motherfucking comic are enablers. They are they are not true people. People would not act like this. This comic is just the fantasy of Kawano Chihai. The comic cuts to the first day of school where she's being very needy towards this man, which is understandable. She may have separation anxiety. We know from the bio thing that she's been abandoned by her father. And obviously that will leave you with a lot of issues. And he's like, ah oh, shit, yeah, that's right. Her dad left her to die once but i'm better than that i'm better i'm a savior i'm a savior i'm a protector so so i know what to do exactly i'm gonna give her my button and now she thinks that you know maybe i'm not worthy of him to come back to me but he will come back for the button it's okay whatever 
we have a very very interesting 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 moment this new character has made an entrance this is an age appropriate love interest for her she's been a little bit mean you know boys it's not okay but they're they're fucking assholes when they're young to little girls and he gets so motherfucking mad he's a protector remember he's like he's, he's not like other men He's not an abuser. Remember that. Have you gotten that through your head? He always once was best for me. So he turns into his vampire form and he glares at this other child. He's beefing with a child. What would a responsible adult do in that situation? Would you beef with the other little child? Probably not. You'd be like, hey, give it back to her. But not like turning into a full vampire for it. Oh my God. So he's very, very protective of her whenever uh, inconsequential shit like this happens as well. So I may say that's the beginning of a, that's a bit of a grooming. So from here on out, whenever there is an interaction with this Lucas character, with this age appropriate love interest to me, whom May will have a crush on at some point, uh, there is this sort of competition between the vampire who is supposed to be a father figure and this child why 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 because tonight will be the night that i will fall for you then the next fucking page is a uh, him oh oh <laughs> it's him uh smelling her first period Listen, bro. We, what, as we move ahead with this comic, it's very important to know that these characters, you know, they're not real. This is stuff that the author has chosen to portray. This feels quite fucking gross and voyeuristic. Why would you wanna, you as a man, portray this very intimate moment in a little girl's life? Now, this next panel, she's a little bit more grown up. So in the previous panel, she just got her period. She's about twelve, probably. It says right here before dating as if that would not be a given as she's very young here obviously and she's like today is love that day they told me I should give flowers to someone I love so here you go mister your flower and he's like for, for me he's blushing right here let me fucking zoom in he's blushing notice the difference so he's blushing at this uh, young child and he's like but, but why why because I love you, of course. You're my best friend. And when he hears that shit, his blush goes away and the flower wilts. As if he's, he was hoping for more. He was hoping for actual love from this child. Put a pin in that. Put a pin in that bit of evidence. Now this is the moment where he gives her the earrings. He's blushing. She's 16. Whatever, we've been through this blissfully unaware. She just hugs him and she's very touchy with him, but he's he's going through some shit and they didn't dare to return her hug because they were not dating at the time. He's been raising this child since she was six. Now they're on a fucking carnival type of thing. And this vendor is like, oh my god, they're so cute together. Since this is love day, I'll give one to your boyfriend. She's like boyfriend i never thought of him that way i mean we've been together for so long ever since i was very young he's taken care of me like a big brother but what is this feeling girl girl you just said oh my god you just said he's taken care of you like a big brother okay so to her you may be like ah he's not really a father figure she's he's a brother a big brother figure as if that makes it any better so this this uh, vendor has got her thinking of shit this let oh my god i fucking can't do this anymore this next wretched ass page uh now she's she's all older than 16 because of the earrings she looks like a motherfucking child we gotta fucking address the art style it's very 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 difficult to differentiate her child self from her adult self now some of y'all may be like well it's just it's just his art style you can't help it it's his art style i fucking hate this argument this art style argument bitch it's a choice listen i do my art style the way that i do it because i like doing it like that you know it's my choices he consciously is drawing women like children 
If that is not sus, I don't know what the fuck is. Look at this shit. First time I saw this panel, I really thought it was her child self. And I was very, very uh, weirded out by the fact that she's hugging him from behind and he's blushing. But since we know that the earrings are given to her when she's 16, we know that she's uh, potentially an adult. But let's, let's talk about the content of this little story right here. She's like, no hug tonight, okay? So this, this kind of reads like they have been hugging and now that he's got feelings for her, it's like, she, I don't, don't want to hug her no more like that. Because she doesn't have that sort of feeling, but I have that sort of feeling. So he's probably feeling a bit guilty in his crazy ass mind. But she, an adult, she t- still has not dealt with her abandonment issues. And as soon as he refuses to hug her, she's like, See, you hate me. She cries like a motherfucking child. And he's like, that's not it. Don't cry this vampire ass lord. And even though he didn't want to hug her, they end up sleeping in the same bed in this motherfucking pose. And he can't sleep because, you know, bro, I swear to God, it's every single page has some sort of red flag in it every single page has some sort of fuckery in here now we cut to another scene where she's in college she is an adult older than 18 and as an art student she uh, a colleague of hers a peer of hers uh, comes through and she's like what do you think of my drawing and she's like oh shit what the fuck is that the drawing is a nude of a man why do you as an 18 year old who's been presumably not held away from society why do you not know what a dick is why how men are so fucking gross why would you portray this shit why would you infantilize this big ass adult woman like that and this other girl she's like it's his wee wee my my adult women my women that have adult women friends when you talk about a man's penis do you ever call it a motherfucking wee wee and ironically because like you may be ironic about a man you know as we often are do you have you ever called it a wee wee or a motherfucking ding dong so she's a woman but like she's still a child so the author who has done all of this still wants to maintain the idea that this is actually a child you know she doesn't know what dick is she's so innocent that at over 18 years old she does not know what dick is and the the, the girl is also like ah oh, she you're useless that would not be my response to that shit i, I would be like are you right have you grown up as a Mormon? What is happening with you? Why do you not know at your big age of 18 what a ding dong is? Now on this page right here, I love when comics do this shit. Where the girl is so tiny and petite. She's so tiny and petite that she cannot use a ladder. Oh, I just realized you're as small as a minion. Listen, as a short person myself, I'm 5'3". Whenever a man calls me small, Small? I really don't act like that. I love, I'm not, ooh, I'm small. I'm like, hey, big man, shut the fuck up. It's so annoying. It's so annoying. Oh my God. And now we got another scene with Lucas. You know, the age appropriate, circumstance appropriate love interest. He's not picking on her now. He's being nice. He's presumably got a crush on her and she's got a crush on him as we know from the bios, and he's giving her a gift. But this motherfucking weird ass, creepy ass dude gets in between them. Why would you get in between them? Why would you do that? In such a creepy, silent manner. He's not even saying anything. He's just getting in between them. And we're supposed to be like, no, he likes her so much. He doesn't want to share. Bro, that's her dad. That's her dad. Now we got this whole fucking situation. She's here with her best friend and Caleb and he's going to get some fresh air but the the best friend is like, listen, I think your dad likes you. Imagine if your best friend uh, saw your parental figure and they're like, listen, I think, I think he likes you. Would you not cast out that friend? Would you not be like, bitch, you are insane in the membrane. Go get the fuck away from me. That's what I would do. But apparently May is like, no, he's like a big brother to me. 
No, listen. Couldn't you tell by his reaction when you talked about your crush just now? Dude was clearly jealous. And I saw the way he looked at you. How exceptionally kind he was to you. I can guarantee you one thing he was. He has feelings for you. Listen. Listen, you weird ass motherfucking bitch. That's like normal things that a parental figure does. Dads especially, like they're they're kind of protective. They can be kind of protective in a very non-weird way of their daughters, right? This is not what's happening here. But it would be, you know, the plausible, normal thing to think in this situation. If this character, this little woman right here would be real and not a fantasy from the fantastical world of Kawano Chihaya, who is fantasizing about this shit happening. Oh my god. <laughs> Bro, this is this is fucking insane. Oh my god, this is fucking insane. Okay. So Lucas has asked May to be his girlfriend, but then Caleb is like, shit, you should not go out with that guy. And she's like, ah, that's what I thought you'd say. You, ju you just don't want me to find love and happiness. Which, you know, a teenager, they may think that. They may say that to their dad. If the dad is like, shit, no, it's a bad guy, you shouldn't date him. She's like, shit, no, I hate you, I hate you. She's being a teenager, you know, because she's a teenager. She's like, shit, let me leave, let me run away from you, leave me alone, I don't want to hear it. No, 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 you got it wrong, I need to tell you something. Please listen to me, just this once. And then you can hate me all you want. I'm, I love you. I love I'm, I'm in I love, love with you. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, bitch. So he wasn't doing all of that because he thought the guy was a bad guy, you know? He was just jealous. He was actually jealous. So now we cut to Lucas asking her to be his girlfriend. But the author is doing his best to paint this guy as a bad person. But Lucas, he's my favorite character in this motherfucking comic. He is the voice of reason. So he's like, it's Caleb, isn't it? Because of that motherfucking bloodsucker, isn't it? I fucking knew it. But Lucas is a kindred spirit to me. Disgusting. He's older than you by at least 100 years. Bro, try, try 800 years. Besides, don't you know you're just his food? Caleb and his kind don't make love to food. They feast on you, bro. And again, ain't this a motherfucking allegory to an older man dating a younger woman? Because like... Listen, this is all a fantasy, right? <clears throat> oh my god. Vampires are so popular in media uh, because everyone likes the idea of a charming, well-learned, powerful, forever young man, you know? Like, a mature man without the uh, fucking wrinkles and erectile dysfunction, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we need to understand though, this is written by a man. Whenever authors write about something, uh, it's quite possible that they're projecting themselves through the characters. So that's uh, very telling, right? So she's crying about that because the truth has been said to her. Even though before he was trying to get in between them and, you know, uh, stop this relationship from happening, he's now, oh, did you finally say yes to him? Congratulations. And she's like, no, I turned him down. Well, actually, I've been thinking a lot about what you said, and I'd like to be your girlfriend. And he's like, shit, well, I promise I will love you with everything I have. I'm happy. That's her dad. That's her dad. I, I love I love how he keeps hammering down that he, she saw him as a big brother figure, as if that's better than being her dad. I don't know yet. Yeah, do y'all have siblings? If you have siblings, you know how fucking gross that is. <sighs> then we got this gross ass, gross ass comparison. Why are you? Listen, he chose all of this. Kawano Chihaya chose all of this. Uh, you could have just had a love story between a vampire and an adult woman uh, who got saved when she was an adult and, you know, maybe they stayed together for a bit. That could have been okay. Or you could have just had a story about the vampire parent who raises a little girl, but you should not fucking mix those. Those do, do not go together if you are sane of mind. It's a gross thing what you're doing right here. This motherfucking comparison. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. Oh, he, oh, he's so cute. He used to raise her. He used to be her parent and now they're together. Bro, 
are you insane? Why are you romanticizing this shit? Oh my god. So her abandonment issues are going strong in this next in this next page. She's like, I know you will leave me one day. I know it. I know it because we've never, you know, despite you raised me, you've never really helped me overcome any of my issues in all of these years. You've actually kind of probably added on to them. You've probably manipulated me to keep having these issues, this abandonment issues, so I, that I would depend on you. That's probably what's happening. I'm just uh, speculating here. But why, why has she not worked through these abandonment issues that she's had ever since she has been uh, rescued by him. I know you will leave me one day, but thank you for staying in my life. And he's like, what are you saying? I won't leave you. I gave you that button. You still have the button, right? <laughs> what if someday I get old? What if I become wrinkly and ugly? And he's like, hey, don't say that. You will stay a child forever. <laughs> You will stay innocent and a child forever because I want you to. But what if I die though? Will you forget about me? But it's the truth though. You live for another thousand years while I will become an old lady soon and then I'll die. Instead of having a healthy conversation about all of these issues with her, he's like, shut the fuck up, let me kiss you. That's the fuck. Listen, I know exactly how this comic is gonna go. She's he, she's gonna end up being turned because this is how it's going. She's not gonna die. She's gonna be turned by him, you know, and then they'll be in this gross ass union forevermore. Also, Caleb has very protective and jealous tendencies over this uh, child woman wife. Uh, whenever there is another male character that shows any sort of interest, he... Uh, gets very jealous. He gets very jealous and kind of very controlling. So this is his co-worker right here. He works as a chef. He kind of hits on May, who is older than 16 here. He offers to take her out for a walk and he's like, absolutely not. Get back here and help me. Get back here. Get back here. The chef guy is like, oh, come on. She's so cute. You're just jealous, sir. I'm not. I'm in command here and you're here to follow my orders. Who the fuck speaks like that? I got such an ick from that. Ugh. Now there is this gross ass conversation about her between these two grown ass men. She's presumably a grown ass woman now, but still it's gross. Uh, it's like, ah, oh, you finally did it. And by the look of it, she must be really enjoying it. Fuck, man. This is so fucking gross. And he's like, did what? What are you talking about? I'm oblivious come on now you know what i'm talking about and he's like shit she's a virgin <laughs> bro 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 we gotta we as a society we need to abolish the idea of virginity it's the grossest motherfucking thing like you're so you as a woman are always so defined by whether you had sex with a man or not you're always defined by this act this inconsequential act in your in the in the mosaic that is your life this is so inconsequential the first time you fucked a man and you become so fucking uh why do i look like trump right now <laughs> you become so fucking um defined by this in the eyes of men it's so gross why was this relevant that she's a virgin this is whether you two did it not whether she ever did it but the, the author was written in illustrated all of this wanted to make it clear that she's pure and innocent right she should be childlike after all she's only an adult because that's socially acceptable right we all know that if this was a private comic she would probably be a fucking child Ugh. but then it turns out that the co-worker only thought that he did it because he had a, a hickey but it was actually a bug haha <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny uh, the next page, the, the two are interacting with a pregnant neighbor and her little child. Uh, Caleb is such an amazing uh, person with children, as we have established. So he is reading to this child. Uh, now the neighbor, because every other fucking adult in this story is an enabler of this relationship. Every good NPC in this motherfucking story is just, uh, you know, kind of pushing them 
the words uh, being together so she's like oh shit he's reading to the child the child has never sat so still ever only this vampire could do it uh, he's such a good dad you should tie the fucking knot already and she's like she's like hmm he is he is kind of a good dad i should probably now the next scene is them actually trying to do it or her trying to do him he's like don't don't i'm not good at self-control we all know that you are dating your daughter right now right here they're reminiscing about when she was young when she was young and uh th this guy is like you are so you've grown so much my love you've grown so much my girlfriend uh do you remember when you would always ask me to put you to bed now i want you to imagine if your man whatever your partner came up to you and, and they were like do you remember how you would always ask me to put you to bed? You have grown so much. <laughs> That's so gross. That's so gross. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And now, and now th there's this visual right here of her young and little. Oh my god. Now this next page is very interesting. There is this group of girls who are like, Oh, I heard she's dating a vampire. Ew, that's not love. She's she's just his buffet. And I think she's blind. <laughs> what a joke. And then later that day, she's very sad about it. And she's like, people say we shouldn't be together. Do you think we're that different? And, and he's like, hey, look at me. Let them say what they want, but don't listen to them. They just don't trust what they can't explain. Now, vampires are not real in real life, right? Now, vampires are not real, but you know what's real? Do you think this may be kind of a, an allegory to that? Do you think it may be an allegory about how he's sad that the society won't accept his love for young girls? When he's a grown ass adult, oh, people just don't understand that love. Fuck off. Listen, I gotta show you, I gotta show you his deviant art because uh, the, not everything is included in here, right? I'm about to say, show you some sexual shit. I'm gonna blur some of it, but it's still kind of fucking ugh. This is called First Night. Girlie is crying. Now, you're not supposed to cry on your first time. If it hurts a lot to the point that she's crying and, and gritting her teeth like that. Motherfucker just went in bone dry or some shit. He did not in fact take it slow. Right. We got this rendition as well but just before they do it. You can't even see the... <sighs> we got this shit. Which is... Aftermath, tell me this is not a child. Tell me this is not a child. I'll start beat them. Tell me this is not a motherfucking child. Oh my god, there is even a little plushie over here. This is so fucking gross. Oh my god. Morning after, you know what? Wow, these infantilizing motherfucking terms. And and also the audacity of drawing this shit in between these two. The, the, he posted this shit and then he was like, yeah, 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 let's go back to her being a child. And then ooh, he bones her. He bones her. Oh my god, the, the fucking nerve. Now the next page is her who's puking all day. She's pregnant. Uh, she goes back to the place where she was a child and met this man. And now she's pregnant with his child. Yeah, that's normal. That's, that's a cute story to romanticize. And that's basically the story at this point. So that's all very, very, very weird. As I'm sure we can all agree. The problem is, we can't all agree on that because I'm looking at the fucking comments and I'm having an existential panic right now. Am I in a universe where, where grooming is suddenly okay? There was no semblance of a sane human being in those comments. And at the time, I rational, I tried rationalizing it in my mind, you know. The only reason why some people can't see why this is wrong is that there are many, many chins that are getting chuffed by their neck beards. They're blocking the bloodstream to the brain. They must be, they must be blocking the bloodstream to the brain as they look down to read this shit on their greasy ass phone with the military grade carbon phone case. Why do they always have the motherfucking carbon phone case as if their phone could ever be dropped anywhere else other than carpet. As if they ever leave them. But 
I digress, I digress, because that's not even true, right? These people are normal, regular people. Because I look through them, I look through them, so there's like a variety of people who enjoy this shit. And they'll shout about it too. They'll argue whenever there's someone who's kind of like, ah, this is kind of sus, you know? They'll, they'll be like, no, it's not sus, I like it. So it's been normalized to the point where they're like, ah, shit, this is normal. I can't I can be loud and proud about this shit. No, no, this is weird. So y'all yeah, know how we roll. I like to get ahead of the motherfucking opposition. Firstly and foremostly, the creep cohort are saying that, well, this story is fictional. Why are you trying so hard to defend a fictional character, a fictional child? This would not be okay in real life, of course. But within the fictional story, it's okay. Why are you why are you defending a fictional character? You're hurting the feelings of this real author man. I just hope that you are being purposefully obtuse. Because how chronically online do you have to be to think that people who are mad at this weird-ass artist and his predatory romanticizing story are mad for the little girl. Y'all simply do not understand the motherfucking power of media. It, media is extraordinarily powerful into uh, changing our perception of things. This is why everybody is fighting for representation in media. Now, this is both a blessing and a curse because if negative shit like this gets into the mainstream and people are like, oh, that's cute, Obviously, that's shit. But I'm nothing if not kind. I'ma spell out for you why I personally think that this story, even though fictional, is very harmful towards real children. Listen, this story not only normalizes a relationship between a guardian and his child that he's supposed to protect, but it's also romanticizing it. Whenever there's someone who's against them, they're made a villain. This relationship is always painted into a positive lighting. Listen, imagine there's a little child who looks at this shit and they may have a very unfortunate situation at home and they see this fucking comic and they're like, ah, that's all okay. That's all okay. Do you think that's okay? And you're like, ah, oh, shit, that, that could never happen, bro. Don't be fucking naive. I know it's sad and we wouldn't want to think that the world is like that, but the world is pretty fucked up. Even though the world is beautiful and amazing in most in instances, it does not mean that shit like this does not exist. And the fact that you are ignoring it and you're like, ah shit, that's never gonna happen. It doesn't make it go away. Let me ask you, why are you defending something like that? Why are you defending something like that? This is a depiction even though it's fictional, it's a depiction of shit that happens in real life. And it's put in a positive lighting. Because there is there is no issue with depicting this shit in media. I think it's actually necessary and stuff like this should be talked about more in media. But not romanticized. It's a very big difference between having a predatory relationship that's being villainized, maybe the... The abused person is escaping it, you know, it becomes inspirational and stuff. It teaches people about it. It teaches people that are in that situation that it's not okay. Versus this shit, which is romanticizing it. It's voyeuristic towards May. It's, it's just a very, very gross story. The clown champions are also saying that, well, this is not grooming. This is not grooming because they don't see each other as parent daughter they, they yeah she sees him as her older brother first of all and second of all you don't have to be the parent of a child to groom that child stop being dumb okay stop being dumb or or they're like oh he never had the intent of doing that bitch he keeps he keeps getting in between her and other love interests while she's a child so i don't know where you think that he's not manipulating that's manipulation right there so as i was reading the comments and saw nothing but praise and adulation i felt gaslit and manipulated but it turns out this guy has gone through this shit before he just got off scot-free there's been a big ass controversy about this uh, a couple of years ago there's a really really dumb guy there's a really, really, really dumb video made by one of his supporters at the time who's basically saying, 
Oh, guys, guys. He's Japanese. He's Japanese. He can't do no wrong. He can't do no wrong. He says nothing about the comic and the relationship that the two characters have with each other. The fact that he raised this girl and now they're dating and she's pregnant. He forgets, conveniently forgets to mention dad. But he's Japanese. Oh my god, he's Japanese. I don't want to see any more Japanese people getting cancelled. Japanese people can't do no wrong. It's so kawaii. It's so kawaii. Bitch, y'all are so fucking ignorant. Since when is the nationality of someone uh, an argument towards their good standing in society? In Japan, of all places, Japan. You're gonna use Japan to defend uh, a nonsy, a nonsy person, a pedophilic person. You're gonna use Japan of all places. The birthplace of Lolicon. You may have heard about Lolicon, but if you don't know, Lolicon is a form of uh, sexually gratifying fan service or straight up pornography involving a young or young looking girl as opposed to uh, admiring a young girl in a purely non-sexual content like Ghibli films for example. I think it's very very important that we are conscious of the fact that any country in the world can have great people and they can also have dumb people and straight up monsters, right? Can we? That's the dumbest argument of them all. Aside from the lolly thing, Japan has historically been weird about little girls. In fact, the age of consent in Japan has been 13 until very, very, very recently. How recently, you may ask? July this year. There is so much dark as shit uh, involving the exploitation of children in Japan. Just as he cannot be defended by the fact that he is Japanese, he should not be condemned by it. I'm merely trying to offer some context for his upbringing and the society that he may be a part of. I'm just saying, it kind of tracks, I'm just saying. And now this brings us to the third argument of this curse. Well, it's a it's a big thing in Japan, It's it's fine. There is a lot of people doing it. Why should we uh, pile on this one artist? There are so many other pieces of media who have this exact same relationship. There is Sashomaru and Ri in, in Inuyasha. There is, a, I forget the names of them other non -si fucking. I'm going to put them on the screen. I don't care enough to look them up right now. Uh, but there's, there's, the point is, there's so many other pieces of media who do this. Even Twilight, which is a Western piece of media, uh, has that weird ass thing with Jacob who is imprinting on a baby, unborn baby, and then runs into the sunset with the child. Another dumb argument, because that's not okay then, and it's not okay now. Another thing that the Kurds are saying is that, well, it's just art. It's just art, you know, it doesn't mean anything. No, it's just a creepy, disgusting guy who happens to throw good. I believe that if the art was not as good as it is, more people would be against this. But because the art is good, it must be fine, right? Like, that's the thing. This guy is, is a figure that a lot of artists are looking up to. If you are a staunch defender of this comic, I want you to ask yourself, what is it that makes you like this so much that you would defend it in such a way, in such a fierce way? What is it about this little child going through all of that? If you're an adult man, even more so, please ask yourself, why do you like Mei so much? Why do you like this power dynamic between them? Is it uh, the fact that she's so naive and clumsy? Is it the fact that she's so little and tiny? Is that not some shit that a child would do? I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted and I need to take a nap. So I'm gonna end it here. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this. Uh, usually we don't talk about dark shit like this. Usually it's a bit more, uh, it's a bit more lighthearted. I need to go back to speaking about just light assholes, you know, not this, not this criminal shit. But it's important. Again, it's important that we talked about it. It is time I left. Bye bye.